on now. <laughs> Yay. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so welcome back, you guys. Um, Samantha and I are excited to get this n new video out, our second video ever. <laughs> um, this week has been crazy. We've been filling a lot of orders, print orders, shipping them, and then Samantha's been doing a lot of stained glass. She just put an installment inside of a gallery downtown, Waycross, Georgia, and I'm so happy for her. She's building an awesome business for herself. And I filmed a tutorial for you guys, and I hope you guys really like it. I'm gonna do voiceover on a lot of it, just because it's really hard for me to talk and paint at the same time. So I hope, I hope you like this kind of way that I did it. And I guess I will see you at the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoy. Good morning, you guys. So today is Wednesday and I'm just getting into the studio. And today I received a um, package. I got a brand new roll of canvas for my G Clay printer. And I'm just going to get started on printing these print orders out. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do right now. So while mom's working on printing and everything, I am trying to make 72 jump rings. I've already made close to 73 over there, but I need to make 72 more. <laughs> My fingers hurt, oh well. Okay, so it is a super rainy Thursday morning, but that's okay because I am super busy. <laughs> so all week I've been preparing to deliver my pieces, my stained glass pieces, to a store downtown Waycross that has agreed to sell my stuff. I'm so excited. I love this store so much. I think it's just, it's so pretty. So I'm really, really hyped about that. I've been working on designing new pieces, which some of you may have already seen on Instagram, on my stories. I've been posting them a lot there. And I've been working on designing cards and um, designing a new logo. And so I ordered like wooden stamps to make my own cards by hand, which I think is so cool. They all turn out a little different because I, I do it myself, but I think that's part of the unique thing about it. it makes just makes it so cool, so neat. And so I filmed some of that, I'm excited to show you guys. And I've been working a lot on taking photos of my pieces, which is very difficult for me. Um, I, but I do have a lot of fun with taking photos. I do enjoy it a lot. And so today I will be editing some. I edited most of them last night, but I still have quite a few to do this morning. And so I'm gonna be doing that. And I also need to price all of my pieces today because tomorrow afternoon, I'm delivering them. So I'm really cutting it close, but I gotta do that today. <laughs> and so I'm going to be doing all of that and hopefully taking you guys with me. So let's get to work.
Good afternoon, you guys. It is Friday afternoon, and I'm going to be filming a finger painting tutorial. I've been planning out a collection of paintings. Um, it's called uh, Coastal Birds, and I have several planned out, about 20 paintings. Today's painting is this one right here. It's of flamingos, and using Lucas Berlin water soluble oils. I love these paints. They're very easy to mix. They clean up very easy and there's very little fumes. So if you're worried about toxicity, definitely go with a water soluble oil paint. You'll love it. So I'm gonna get started by mixing my color palette and then I'm gonna film the tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoy this. So we're gonna start by just mixing all of our a palette together. I am using a very limited palette here. I have three warm colors and I've chosen three cool colors. And you see me mixing and making different tones with these. The yellow ochre is the very first one. Then I have raw umber, magenta. Then I have serenial blue, Prussian blue, and viridian green. These six colors are the staple to a lot of my, my palettes. Um, I like to mix different tones using the raw umber. The raw umber grays it out and that graying out is so essential to being able to find your focal point in your painting. I have found that in the beginning when I was learning how to paint, I often use just straight hues out of the bottle and that's when I, I started making associations of, with my color, which ones um, complement each other, which ones don't, you know, what is associated with these colors. All of that is very important to learn in the beginning. But then as you get more advanced, it's so important that you start mixing tones and you start pulling in your gray color because um, it is your grays that are gonna mute what doesn't need to speak so loud in your painting and it's going to accentuate what you want your focal point to be inside of your painting. So um, I use raw umber and the very first line you see me mixing that's just um, straight hue from the bottle and raw umber and that starts the graying process. And then I usually pull in yellow ochre to kind of give it a, a yellowy tint. Um, when you're mixing with blue, of course, that's gonna give it a green tint, which is fine. Um, and then the very last line that you see me mixing, that's with mm, titanium white. Now I try to pull up the saturation all the way, you know, as light as I can um, to create my highlights and then what you see me mixing right here is a very, very warm undertone that I use in all of my foliage. And I try to pull in my cools. I try to mix together my cool and my warm. You start to see this harmonizing in your painting when you have one staple color, like the one that I'm mixing right now. And you're gonna see that in the painting um, really harmonize between your warms and your cools because you see that in nature too. Um, nature does this all on its own and it, it's kind of hard in the beginning um, to mix because you're afraid of muddying up your color but honestly if you only mix with two or three colors in the beginning you really start to grasp the understanding of, of color mix. So here we're just going to start applying it to the canvas. Um, I first prep my canvas with a very bright orange acrylic paint and then I go back in and I basically put down a rough sketch with a brush um, of where I want my subjects and just to get an understanding of my painting. Um, so I put this underpainting down using a very thin mixture of um, oil paint and 
just water because it's water soluble oil paints. So I roughly, you know, get my sketch down and then I start painting. So right here, when I'm starting to apply um, my finger painting, I always put down the darkest tones first and you want to work from your dark to your light. And so I've put down the darkest um, Prussian blue color and then I put down uh, the next would be the raw umber up the stalk of the tree and then I started adding in my grays. And now I'm putting in those um, shadowy blue color underneath the foliage and that really, that tone really ties in my entire painting because um, like I said earlier, I mixed in my cools and my warms so that um, this undertone really causes the entire picture to, to speak fluidly. So now I'm just working in using kind of a down angle stroke with finger painting, much like brush painting, you're always um, wanting to follow the right direction because it is so textural. Um, you see the light kind of bouncing in all these crevices and, and leading your eye down the tree trunk of this palm tree. So it's important to make sure that your strokes are going in the right direction. You wouldn't want to go side to side. Um, you definitely want it to mimic the way uh, the tree looks. You're always looking at the line, the lines that are going in a certain direction. And it explains, you know, the, to your eye and to your brain, you know, what this is. So Impressionism is loved by so many because um, of the broken, sporadic, you know, color that got, if you looked at it up close, it was just sort of splattered across the canvas. But it creates this illusion of depth and, and movement across the canvas. And it's, it's just amazing how finger painting and Impressionism goes so well together. Um, because the end of your finger, you only have so much mobility with that. You can't get extreme detail with it. So you have to start um, becoming creative with your finger strokes um, to create the correct illusions. So one of the things that I wanted to mention um, is that I use a paper towel in between each color application. I use the industrial strength that you can buy from a hardware store um, like Lowe's or Home Depot. I find it wastes less overall. Um, normally one sheet uh, lasts me about a half a painting. So, um, and I just prefer a much thicker paper towel. Um, my gloves are from Lowe's as well. I usually get about three to four paintings with one set of gloves, so there's very little waste there. So now you can see that I've started adding in some of my gray greens. Um, when I use the term gray, I normally mean like uh, gray blue or gray green. Um, whenever they are dulled down like that, um, that's when it really accentuates the the um, stronger hues. So I'm just filling in the spaces, trying to block things out with a lot of different um, color. You can see I'm working now kind of on the ground, the reflection area, and now I've bounced back up into the sky. This is pretty much how I paint. I, I cannot say that I just do one you know, one color at a time. It's not the way my brain works. <laughs> and um, finger painting is just so much fun. It is a lot of fun. You want to grab this color and that color and, and just play around with it. Um, but, you know, you tend to uh, try to keep the rules as much as possible so that your, your painting turns out pleasing. So I put down my dark brown first, and then you're gonna see me building up from that on this uh, tree trunk. And 
again using the the appropriate directional strokes you can see that tree trunk really comes to life and now I've got some of the shadow blue or the undertone that I'm bringing in and now some highlights When the sky comes into the picture, those highlights make a lot of a lot of sense. Contemporary impressionism has such beautiful color in it. Very vibrant color. I love it. It's the happiest painting I think you So here, um, on this particular tree trunk, I think I decided that it was just a little bit too wide at the bottom. Now the great thing about um, painting in pasto style like this is that you can, if you're very, very gentle, you can either put a layer of paint over the top of what you want to cover up, and in this case it was um, creating a smaller trunk, or you can scrape it. Um, but with finger painting, the texture is really so yummy that I really like layering my paint to get it uh, the right volume to it. So there I did I did bring in some more dark colors. I felt like it needed more shadow at the bottom. And I'm just going to continue filling out this tree trunk until I get the right um, color on top. And I, I've learned through the years of having a very soft touch whenever you're layering on top so you don't pull in that bottom layer and start making your artwork look like mud. Painting these palm tree leaves is so much fun. I always start again with a dark color and then I stack on top of that and it really creates a beautiful um, shadowy effect underneath it. I do have this video sped up because it was just taking too long. <laughs> I paint a lot slower than what you see. So if you're, you know, if you're going to try to follow along or anything like that, um, don't worry. It's, it's sped up. You're not painting too slow. <laughs> so on this section, just like I started on the other side, you start with your dark tones, and then I fill in the, the undertone color that really binds the, the painting together. Placing my gray greens. Now I've kind of sped it up here, um, and I've put a little bit of my orangey yellow in the tree trunk there, and now I'm painting in the water. Water is so much fun to paint. I totally understand why Monet loved it so much. <laughs> it sort of breaks up light and color and the shapes that it creates in the shadows and the mirroring images are just so intoxicating. So this is the shadow of the tree trunk.
So now we're going to focus a little bit still on the horizon line, um, filling in that foliage. Working towards the, the birds. Sometimes um, my paint doesn't even touch each other when I'm applying it. You just really want those broken up pieces of color throughout your painting. And it helps sometimes to either have a mirror and look at your painting using a mirror or standing back several feet. It can be quite a physical experience to paint. <laughs> You don't realize all the movements that you make, um, standing up, walking back and forth, staring at your painting. <laughs> and when you're painting in pasto, you really have to paint within just like a few hours. You want to complete your painting. So um, this painting took me, I believe it took almost six hours, but I've condensed it down for you guys so you don't have to sit through six hours of me painting. I think you can get a pretty clear idea of what I'm doing. You can see how I'm just putting almost like dots in the sky and dots reflecting in the water. I try to reflect the same type of shapes. So if I have a very long shape in one color in the sky, then I try to reflect that back into the water. tapestry, old, old world tapestry, and that's where I really get a lot of my inspiration for my paintings, for my collection, especially this recent Coastal Birds. I've been looking in a lot of home decor books. So right here, I'm filling in the water again, and I just wanted you to kind of see a really up-close picture of how I push each pigment into each other and let it sort of mix together organically on its own. It, it is very pleasing to the eye whenever you let this naturally happen. And I'm saving really my brightest colors, my highlights, for the water right here. The water is, for me, I use a lot of squiggly lines to, to explain the movement that's happening inside the water. I love decorating with impressionistic paintings as well. There's so many things you can use, so many different color palettes you can pull from this painting. Um, my inspiration for this painting and for this collection of paintings I, I've been in the very far south, um, Georgia, 
North Florida line here, and it is very lush, very verdant, and I love it. I love how dense the foliage is here. And so I really wanted to portray that feeling inside of this collection. You want those very dark color, um, very dense sections of landscape. And then this beautiful bird walking through it, almost like an explorer. <laughs> And that's the way I feel all of my, this whole collection. These birds are exploring their, their surroundings. And you want all of that life to just pop around them. I'm throwing a little bit more gray into the water here so that the highlights really stand out in this painting. Just finishing up the water here, and we have just about finished this painting out now. I uh, was quickly throwing in a little bit of ripples there, indicating the movement of the birds. And I think that's just about it. So I painted in the sky and I just want to show you a close-up here of the sky. The very very um, light colors at the top. Now I'm mixing color here for the birds. I went ahead and brought in my brightest orange. The birds consist of several different um, color. You don't just want to go in with one pink because then it looks one dimensional. So you want to make sure that there's depth within their feathers as well. So you want to have a very dark um, tint and then you want to work your way up to a medium and then of course your highlights. So always start starting with your dark first. And don't worry about your lines. This is the type of painting that you do not focus on very, very sharp lines. You're painting very loosely. Here I'm taking just straight out of the bottle the orange. And again, I use a very bright orange. I think Lucas Berlin only has one orange, if I'm correct. Um, normally I mix my own oranges, but I really wanted a pure orange, so I do buy a small bottles of this. Always putting in those darker color under underpainting first. Getting my shapes in. Flamingos are so elegant. And then they're so goofy at the same time. And it's, it's hard. You, you want to play into the beautiful design side of, of the elegance. So here I went ahead and put a layer of the medium tone. 
And now I'm just building up those feathers. Bringing that texture out. Finger painting does a great job with feathers. I can see I need to clean off my finger. It's bothering me <laughs> as I'm watching this back. Um, when you start to do the details, you want just the tip of your finger to have paint on it. If Okay, good. I wiped it down. If you have too much paint on your finger, you're going to end up smudging it into something else. So you really want the most control out of it. So having very little paint on your finger, you can do that. I practiced several times um, painting these flamingos in my sketchbook before I go to do this and I still struggled with the neck. I feel like, well, I felt like I did not um, do the neck of this first flamingo correctly. It was too short. And so the last picture that you see in this video is going to be of the corrected and I didn't film that part um, it was the very next day I went in and I scraped the neck a little bit removed some of the paint and then created a much more elongated um, very elegant neckline now I'm adding in just a little bit of the highlights here and there, creating those outer feathers. Oh, and here's the beak. This is when it really, you can really see it come in. It starts to take shape. The hardest part is not over touching when you're finger painting. That was the eye on this one was just a pleasant little mistake that happened. And you're going to see, and once I saw it happen, you know when to stop. And pulling that black up into the beak, again, it takes time to get to the point where you know just one or two strokes and you'll have it don't touch it again <laughs> but you do learn how to to understand or know when to stop now I am almost done with this painting I'm just finishing up the legs here and then I'm going to add a little bit of pink reflecting in the water I might clean up the lines around the neck bring in a little more of the blue um, undertones around the neck to make it nice and smooth and this is the final look.